Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the new moon in Gemini at 16 degrees, 17 minutes on June 6th, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of celestial bodies, fixed stars, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us start to associate to our multidimensional self beyond our own solar system, but also to expand our views of other influencing bodies, such as fixed stars, on our astrology chart and our uh, energies here on Earth. So I welcome you to this galactic astrology reading. But first of all, I want to show my gratitude and appreciation to everyone who's watching my videos and also those who are giving me comments and sharing your perspectives and cheering on and all the uh, love I'm receiving. Together, we're learning more about galactic astrology. So thank you for watching my videos. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my Galactic Alignments Reference Guide. There's a link in the description box below. This new moon is an abundant one. The new moon is conjunct Venus at 16 degrees of Gemini, but also conjunct the Orion constellation and specifically the fixed star Rigel at 16 degrees of Gemini. This is a very abundant feminine energy that we are receiving. And through Rigel, we also are tapping into that abundance, that uh, benevolence and riches, if you will, that an abundant world can give us. It's a reminder to start to step into the perspective uh, that we actually have access at all times to an abundant energy. The new moon is opposite the galactic point, the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. And this is a balancing energy. Uh, it's reminding us to integrate perspectives, not just leaning on uh, polarity, but also coming back to wholeness is a value, a opportunity for us to start balancing now. The Great Attractor is a very expansive energy. It has to do with integration, but also inclusion and uh, of perspectives. It's a non-judgmental uh, energy that's associated with the Great Attractor. And it's a great reminder here at this new moon to balance this within ourselves first, balance this need for integration, allowing inclusion of everyone's uh, perspectives. So at the collective level, we are asked to consider ourselves and our environment as abundant. The ruler of this new moon is Mercury, and Mercury is also in Gemini, now at six degrees of Gemini, conjunct the hiatus star cluster. Mercury at this new moon is a very uh, talkative <laughs> uh, ruler. Mercury wants us to focus on creativity and creation and also to act on our daily lives in terms of expressing our creativity. Mercury is very expressive in Gemini, being the ruler of this new moon. And Mercury is feeling very happy in Gemini. So this is a very active ruler. Uh, speaking to the hiatus star clusters energy that is bringing this focus on creativity, um, creation. The Orion constellation is very much highlighted at this new moon. And if we look at the traditional astrology wheel uh, and look at the degrees there, 16 degrees of Gemini to about 29 degrees of Gemini is associated with the Orion constellation. And many of us have soul memories from incarnation themes associated with Orion. And this is a new moon that is calling us to balance some of those 
experiences, karma experiences from the Orion constellation. And now with Jupiter in Gemini, this new moon is divinely timed to emphasize the expansion, the opportunity that we have to step into more of an abundant mindset, as opposed to sometimes the extreme polarity uh, that we are uh, living in as a collective. This is an energetic influx of divine feminine energy to remind us that we do have um, evolution that is supporting liberation, liberation from what is holding us down, what we have felt is limiting us. We are reminded to step into and bringing to the forefront our radiant dreams, our hopes and wishes and ideal life that we are envisioning for ourselves. This may sometimes sound like um, a dream, but it, it is a reminder to allow that vision to come into the forefront. We are invited to become vessels for abundant flow and to be done with what has held us down for so long. It, ultimately, it's an energetic decision that we're making. What uh, we want to lean on, whether it's a harmony and abundant flow, or if it's uh, a sense of polarity and black and white type of energy. We are invited to uh, rely on a bigger perspective, that we are part of something bigger than just um, the physical world and the physical realm. We are invited to become what we dream we are and what we could be. And sometimes this stays as a thought. But here at this new moon, we are asked to actually take action and make it come into form because we have also a favorable connection uh, of Mars into a multidimensional um source of inspiration. And we'll talk more about that in theme two. We are asked to go out of the comfort zone in what we know, uh, attached to the physical world. We're asked to start to live with a um, connection to the unseen on a daily basis. And this is part of the path to a liberated state where we can always tap into an abundant flow of energy. This is not always available in the physical realm because the polarity that we are experiencing is very much emphasized, but the higher perspective is uh, a connection to an abundant state at all times. So this uh, is also a little bit of a growth opportunity, and we'll talk more about that growth opportunity in theme one. All of this is sourced by a unique energy within ourselves. And often we can call that a passion of, for something that really lights us up. And uh, asteroid Eros is prominent in this chart. And we're going to talk more about Eros and his role at this new moon in theme three coming up. So before we go into the new moon chart... I'd like to share the three themes as usual before we get into the details of this new moon. So the first theme I've called breaking free, living your dream life. And here we're going to talk more about the new moon and Orion Regal, the great attractor, but also the influence from Andromeda Alparats and Corvus Algorab. The second theme I've called influx of pure divine feminine energy. And here we have a central role of Mars conjunct the Andromeda galaxy M31, but also the influence from the Hydra constellation and also the galactic center. The third theme I've called harmonious union and liberation. And here we're going to focus on Chiron's opposition to Actress and two squares that are important. 
the square that Chiron is making to the asteroid Eros, but also the square that Chiron is making to Lyra constellation and, and the fixed star Sulafat. So let's take a look at the new moon chart next. So here we have the new moon chart. And as you can see, the new moon there, sun and the moon together at 16 degrees of Gemini, conjunct Venus also at 16 degrees of Gemini. This trio is conjunct the Orion constellation and the fixed star Rigel at 16 degrees of Gemini. So yes, this is a powerful combo. Orion Rigel is a fixed star associated with an expansive energy, but also includes a bit of a, a lesson to it. And here, Rigel is supporting us with benevolent uh, energy. It has to do with leaning into your riches, your riches within, but Orion Regal is associated with invention and also teaching the good parts of life, if you will. And also, this is a energy that is asking us to see our life from an abundant perspective. So this new moon is a new start, a new beginning of a new perspective and the opposition to the great attractor here. The great attractor is associated also with inclusion and collaboration in a non-judgmental environment. So this opposition here is a beautiful invitation for us to balance our sense of abundance and actually allow ourselves to tap into that. This opposition is a beautiful invitation to integrate this expansive part of ourselves that has to do with uh, going out of the, the comfort zone, going out of what we have experienced before and believe that we live in an abundant world. It also speaks to our own belief systems that we are also ourselves abundant. Now, it's sometimes easy to forget that. Overall, this opposition is speaking to that we're not alone. We are also a collective that needs uh, integration of opinions, different ways of doing things and not step into a judgmental energy, rather be inclusive and see all the options that and potentialities that are created by in inclusion. I've also included Mercury, the ruler of this new moon here to highlight uh, Mercury's conjunction to the hiatus star cluster and the importance that creativity has and our association to creation is at this new moon. There is an infusion of this creative energy as part of the new moon here as well. So let's take a look at the first theme next. So here we have the first theme that I've called breaking free, living your dream life. And here the new moon is highlighted. And I'll walk you through what I see here. The new moon conjunct Venus conjunct Orion Regal is this huge focus on divine feminine energy, but also the opportunity we have for breaking free from polarity and uh, us and them type of uh, thinking to a bigger perspective where uh, we are including a multi-opinion, multi-perspective uh, way of living and also perspective of how that is abundant in our lives with a multitude of ways. Now, this opposition to the great attractor is really the um, multidimensional force that brings this to the next level. So this theme also has a strong directional energy to it. As you can see here, the sextile from the new moon to the north node at 13 degrees of Aries conjunct Andromeda Alprats at 14 degrees of Aries. And opposite the north node, of course, is the south node uh, at 13 degrees of Libra conjunct the Corvus 
constellation and, and the fixed star Algarab at 14 degrees of Libra. And here you can see how it all links together with that opposition of the new moon to the great attractor and the nodes, giving us a um, quite significant directional energy here. This may be the way we have to go, <laughs> uh, according to the North Node, at least. The North Node has been in conjunction with Andromeda Alparats for a little while now. And Alparats is associated with this need for freedom and um, freedom and lim from limitations. Uh, walking uh, an empowered path that feels like enjoyment. And also the Corvus constellation and the fixed star Algarab has been in association with the South Node for a little bit. We haven't really talked about Corvus, but I felt now is the time to bring in Corvus and the energy of that influence on the South Node. The influence that we are receiving from Algarab is that courage to actually free ourselves from energies that we are no longer associated with. So the South Node has an important role here and conjunct uh, true Lilith here at 15 degrees of Libra. This is an uh, important energy highlighted at this new moon. This is an important directional message, yes, because we are walking towards the energy of liberation, freedom of lim limitations, and which is associated with Alparats, as opposed to the opposition here of Algarab uh, associated with the South Node, where we are gaining the courage to release those energies that we may not associate more with anymore. Uh, and this may be situations, this may be people, this may be uh, a path we have gone down that no longer resonates. So this combination of energies influencing this new moon clearly highlighted here in, in this formation is an important one. Here we have also uh, Saturn's influence on this theme. And Saturn is now at 18 degrees of Pisces, uh, forming a square to the new moon, but also to the great attractor subsequently. So Saturn is really encouraging us at this time to be able to go beyond what we have experienced before to envision this harmonious, abundant path and living our dream life. It takes us to go within and really asking ourselves, what is that direction for me? Saturn here is uh, at 18 degrees of Pisces. And as we know, Saturn is uh, really a different Saturn in Pisces. But I am sensing that Saturn really wants us to sit in silence, connecting with um, nature, connecting with the elements to find that path, that abundant path, connecting with the bigger perspectives of universal flow to really find that liberation and bigger perspective that we're invited to kind of grow into. So um, Saturn is really active here through this T-square uh, reminding us about silence and how liberating that silence can be if we take the time to slow down. So I wanted to show Orion Regal here on the sky map, and many of you are familiar with the Orion constellation. Regal is that front foot <laughs> that sits uh, at the bottom there of the Orion constellation. The message of this new moon is also that we are not alone. We need each other and we have options uh, of paths to go down. Orion Regal and the conjunction to this new moon is really encouraging us to take multiple uh, perspectives in and how we can integrate that to build a bigger perspective within ourselves of our path and where we want to go next, because it is not black and white. It's not uh, one way fits all. It is a unique path that only you and your soul knows. And it takes, per Saturn's guidance here, uh, some time to sit with that, to sit in silence and listen into what direction is right for you. 
another encouragement from Orion constellation overall is what have we learned by living a life where we have observed or maybe even been experiencing extreme polarity. Orion Regal is that energy that influences us to um, see it from an abundant state. What have we learned? Because the Orion's foot here, the front foot is asking us to step out of that comfort zone. I also want to highlight the Corvus and show you the Corvus constellation here on the sky map and highlighting the Algarab fixed star that is now conjunct the south node and has been so for a little while. Algarab is that energy where we summon courage to actually release energies that are no longer resonating with us. So the south node here is an important, also directional energy at this new moon. If you're curious about Andromeda Alparats conjunct the north node, we spoke about Alparats in the Scorpio full moon video back in end of April. So uh, there is a timestamp there in that video in case you want to learn more about Andromeda Alparats. So here we have the second theme that I've called an influx of pure divine feminine energy. And here we have a, a fire trine in focus. But first, we're going to start with Mars. Mars is now at 28 degrees of Aries, conjunct Andromeda Galaxy M31 at 29 degrees of Aries. Uh, many of us have soul memories, incarnation themes associated with another galaxy. And this is a new beginning energy. By Mars, a personal planet being in alignment with our sister galaxy here, Andromeda Galaxy M31, it is that entry into um, downloads from multi dimensional sources, not only Andromeda galaxy, but it's a opening to a bigger perspective, a new beginning type of manifestation energy. And this grand fire trine is connected through Hydra constellation and the fixed star Alphard at 27 degrees of Leo, but but also that trine from Mars to the galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. This is a fiery energy, really bringing that momentum of a new beginning. And Mars being here right now is really the go button <laughs> to uh, tap into this pure divine feminine energy downloads that we may experience at this time. So why do I say divine feminine energy is activated now? It's because of Andromeda's association with divine feminine energy, very Venusian. Uh, it's associated with beauty, magnetism, fortune, and limitless environment, as opposed to our Milky Way galaxy, which is more um, male uh, principle type of orientation, more Mars associated versus Venus, so to say. This is also the attraction between our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy, because they're m said to be moving together. And, uh, you know, billions of years from now, potentially are merging, coming into union. Mars's activation here of Andromeda galaxy energy is really uh, spinning the wheel here. Uh, Hydra is associated also with life force, kundalini energy type of uh, energy source. And galactic center is associated with uh, our own galaxy here. So it is really a invitation to integration of polarity even more, coming closer and closer together uh, as a harmonious um, joint collective energy. And also, I have highlighted Haumea before in previous videos, but at this new moon, Haumea, as one of the representatives of new Earth energy, now at zero degrees of Scorpio here, conjunct the Shapley attractor, is another marker for this importance when uh, a personal planet is activating Andromeda galaxy. Haumea at this time and Shapley attractor there are also in on this 
this uh, swirling energy. So I just wanted to highlight this, that Homea here is fully in the mix of um, bringing this divine feminine energy in. So here, I just want to give you some perspective on where to locate the Andromeda galaxy uh, in the sky. And it's uh, between Cassiopeia constellation and Andromeda constellation here. And we also see Alperats, uh, in, in the on the sky map there. I also included some images for you to tune into the Andromedan um, multi-dimensional type of high frequency energy, but also Homea there at the bottom, uh, bringing in the connection between earth, sky, water, air, all the elements and expanding us into being part of our environment, seamless, uh, abundant flow and tune into that ability we all have to align with abundant energy. So here we have the third theme that I've called harmonious union and liberation. And here we have a powerful theme centering around the degree of 22. 22 uh, is associated with uh, mastery, but also manifestation and creativity and harmony. And it's also an angel number. So there is something in the air here that is coming together. Now we have Chiron at 22 degrees of Aries squaring the uh, asteroid Eros at 22 degrees of Cancer. Chiron is in opposition to the fixed star Actress in the Boots constellation at 24 degrees of Libra. Actress is associated with emotional healing mastery, but also more from a scientific and psychic uh, combination perspective. So here we have a um, very powerful grand cross because also Lyra Silafat is at 22 degrees of Capricorn, building this beautiful formation of energy Lyra Silafat is associated with music, with light language, but also with very high vibrating uh, music and sound. So here we have a powerful um, combination that is linked into tuning into your inner passion, that high vibrating energy within yourself that is associated with your life's purpose. Eros here, uh, opposite Lyra Silafat at the moment, is how we can tune into that uh, through vibration. And often we also have uh, a link into our emotions. So actress here being the uh, cleansing frequency to really deeply connect with that passion within ourselves. Chiron being here to actually be the force of healing at this time. This is a um, union that is within ourselves if we allow it to connect, connect the dots. And here it may also be the key to our own liberation. Eros in Cancer is that nurturing of self. Eros often is associated with, you know, that bow and arrow shooting towards a target of passion. But here in Cancer, Eros is really turned within and want to nurture and um, console ourselves. So that goes hand in hand with uh, Saturn's advice here to go within and, and find that uh, silence and stillness within. In the cosmos, in our solar system, uh, the orbit of asteroid Eros is between Venus and Mars. So this makes also this energy very personal. And it's a unifying energy between masculine and feminine. I, that's the way I see it. And from a galactic perspective, Lyra Silafat is a more of a divine feminine polarized energy versus actress, which is more of a male, uh, more masculine uh, energy. So taking all that together, here is a message of internal unification coming together within to integrate polarity. And this is a very um, consistent message throughout this new moon. 
And all this as a backdrop of the highlight on the Orion constellation here at the new moon in Gemini. In summary, this new moon has a big emphasis on harmony, integration, and coming into union between masculine, feminine energy within, but also to expand our spiritual practice, coming to silence, and to really listen to that direction that we need to take next and uh, further detach from uh, what everybody else is doing. Orion Regal is a, a very benevolent energy that coupled with Venus's presence at this new moon, conjunct the new moon, opposite the great attractor. It's all about integrating energy that makes us feel harmonious. Ultimately, it's to release energies that we no longer associate with and have the courage to do so. And also the message around that we are not alone. We are uh, invited to collaborate, see other people's uh, perspectives to integrate that and create a bigger perspective overall. So that was the first thing, breaking free, living your dream life. The second theme we talked about was the influx of pure divine feminine energy. And that is the activation of Mars being conjunct Andromeda Galaxy M31. But also this opposition that activates the Shapley Attractor and Homea there in the early degrees of Scorpio. This is a um, fire trine, grand fire trine, also linking in Hydra Alphard that we've talked about so many times at 27 degrees of Leo, but also our own um, galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. This is a powerful energy of manifestation at this time. And the highlight on divine feminine energy is the third theme harmonious union and liberation. Isn't that the ultimate goal? <laughs> Here we have a lot going on at 22 degrees. And every time I see a, a numerology in a chart, it means something. Something is coming together here. And we're guided to nurture that inner passion. Eros is making a square to Chiron. So there's healing involved, but also uh, Lyra Silifat at 22 degrees of Capricorn being engaged here, talking to a very high vibrating uh, light language, uh, light codes that are coming in but also actress being engaged here uh, as the overarching guide for emotional healing mastery at this time. So as usual, I share also three questions. Should you want to integrate this new moon energy some more? The first question is, how can you spend more time in silence? And the reason for that is that we have the opportunity then to connect with an abundant flow of energy. Maybe it's in nature, maybe it's on the water, maybe it's uh, in a place where you feel in harmony. This is guidance coming in to allow ourselves to be connected to a bigger perspective, also an abundant flow of universal energy at this time. The second question is, how can you attract more of what you want? And often we feel uncomfortable attracting things that we want. We are so used to go get, which is the opposite direction of energy. But here, by spending more time in silence, going within, it also uh, emphasizes our ability to attract what we want. So how can you attract more of what you want? And the third question is, how can you prioritize your life to focus more on self-love? Self-love is an energy of self-sourcing uh, what we need. And instead of looking at an external source to provide that for us, this new moon is a um, invitation to really um, allow ourselves to uh, give ourselves what, what we need. The integration of masculine and feminine energies within ourselves are also supporting the increased energy of self-love, uh, the sense of uh, being uh, comfortable and happy in our own skin, for example. So 
how can you prioritize your life to focus more on self-love? There we go. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. Thank you for listening to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and galactic astrologer. I am so happy you're here. I hope that you keep engaging with my videos, uh, share, like, and share with your friends because we're uh, all getting more familiar with galactic information and how we piece it together for um, a bigger perspective. I want to say thank you again for being here, watching this video or listening to the podcast. I so appreciate you. So welcome back. I will be back soon with another one. Bye.